Hey, today's classic rock. Good afternoon. It's Chris Marino from iHeartMedia, the Hudson Valley. I'm here in the studio with my good friend Pat Gasparini. How are you, Chris? From the Patrick James Band, from uh, 4 by Fate, and many, many projects here in the Hudson Valley. And uh, as you've been hearing advertised, this is the time that we're taking to um, pay tribute to a man who touched so many lives, not only with his music, but here in our community, it's just this rare situation. This tribute won't air anywhere else on terrestrial radio except here, because this was John Regan's home. This was John this Regan's is house. Home. This is going to live yeah. on in social media and, of course, all, all around the world. But it's originating right here in John. John grew up in this area, and we lost John Regan on Good Friday, April yep. 7th, when he yep. was called home. He was 71 years old. And, uh, boy, Pat, you were there. I saw you in the early uh, part of that, uh, the, the following um, Friday, I believe, when we had the uh, a special uh, remembrance ceremony for John in Wappingers Falls. Uh, I was there for the early part of it, but later on, it was an, a cavalcade of rock stars that came to pay tribute to John. Absolutely, and it just it went on and on and on as as it got later. Um, you know, Peter, his family, and his band showed up. Ace showed up. Tons of uh, tons of musicians and producers and engineers, and and um, the love just went on and on. And on John Patania, and it just the name. You could sit here all day. I, I, yeah. could, I don't yeah. want to leave anybody out, but, but everyone showed up and 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 paid tribute. And you know the, the 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 amazing part of it is the stories of love that it's that just poured out from everybody. Um, I know he was looking down at, with a smile on his face because it was Father Rob did a beautiful job and represented him sure. proud and and um, and and everybody showed up and, and paid their respects for for a gentleman that deserved it. Absolutely. So what we're going to be doing today, we're going to be talking to a couple key people in uh, uh, John's musical journey. You know, we're gonna, there's so many, we, if we had 24, 48 hours, we get everybody fit in there. Yeah. But we're going to do the best we can and hit a couple of those uh, people. Um, I had the pleasure of working with John on what became the Cafe Italia show yeah. uh, that played a lot of Italian songs and, and uh, Italian recordings of popular artists. That's on our sister station, KI. WKIP, uh, which will be tomorrow at 11. We're going to do a special tribute for Cafe Town. But today is about John's rock roots and the impact that this Grammy winner had on the music you've listened to, especially us older guys that you grew up listening to. And I remember I was 15 in high school when David Bowie got together with Mick Jagger to redo Dancing in the Streets. I remember it too. Yep. And how did <laughs> John plays the bass on this? Unbelievable, right? This record features John Regan. Take a listen. We have guests galore this afternoon sharing this with you. Thank you for sharing it with us. The John Regan tribute on Z93. Okay! Tokyo! South America! Australia! France! Germany! UK! America!
Yeah, hi, Ace Curly here. Hey, Ace, how are you, man? It's Pat for 4 by Fate. How you doing? I'm here with Chris Marino. From iHeart. How you doing, Ace? I'm great. I'm getting ready to leave for Ohio. I got to show that tomorrow night. I was there early for the um, service, of the, the remembrance uh, ceremony for uh, John Regan, which would... We're doing today this uh, tribute on, on Z93 locally here at the iHeart station, and I miss seeing you and uh, Peter and all the... But I understand uh, it was amazing that you made it there, and um, we've been talking about the rich history of John and, of course, those great years with Fraley's Comet, man. Tell right. us about that. Well, I met John at North Lake Studios, and uh, I was very, very impressed with his bass work. Very shortly after I met him, I, I asked him to join my band. Yeah. He's actually, I have to honestly say, out of all the bass players I've worked with, he probably was the best bass player of them all. Absolutely. Yeah. What's crazy, Ace, is how that footage and that time, right? You lived it. John lived it. But it lives yeah. forever, like on YouTube and all this media that's out yeah. there. You know, there's tons of interviews where you know you're, it's you, Ace, and and John was right there by your side. It was always John next to you. Yeah, I mean, you know, we used to do MTV when it was a different format, Headbangers Ball, and all that kind of stuff. And uh, everything's changed so drastically since then. But uh, John was always right there. In fact, I trusted John so much. I let him handle settlements and stuff and, and deal with the money. Because I hate doing money. It just gives me a headache. <laughs> <laughs> I hate dealing with money. I hate filling all that forms. I hate all that stuff. You know, because that, that, you know, doing that stuff is the analytical side of your brain. But my brain is ruled by the creative side and artistic side. So uh, it gives me a migraine. <laughs> Well, I hear you, Ace. But John, John was nice enough to do all that stuff and, and pay the band and, and deal with the settlements and also merchandising. And he was a very trustworthy guy and an amazing uh, person and an amazing bass player. And I can't say enough about how good John was. I was the one that screwed up our relationship because, you know, I got too, too uh, addicted to drugs and alcohol and, you know, after a while, he just couldn't deal with it anymore. And um, but luckily, I'm almost 17 years sober. You know, God bless, right. God bless, God bless you, Ace. Yeah. And you know, it takes a big man to say the stuff that you're saying. Well, yeah, I'm not embarrassed. Everybody knows it. And you know, Paul and Gene dragged me, dragged my name through the mud after I quit the band. You know, and uh, I did have, a, I had a serious problem, but you know, eventually, you know. With the help of my sponsor and going to meetings, uh, I overcame it. And with the help of God, of course. We're talking to Ace Freely, Freely's comic Kiss, and of course had a very strong relationship with John Regan, who was part of his band. And I tell you what, Pat, what a treat it was in Ace a few years ago when you made it back to Poughkeepsie and we had a sort of reunion. Yeah. Of, of fr- Everyone still to this day talks about the reunion. It was about... No, how long? Couple, a couple of years ago, it was before COVID, right? Yeah, it was co- right before COVID hit. So you know, a good five, six years, maybe seven years ago. Yeah, we did the four by fate and and the ace show, and and at the end, everybody got together for the first time, and I think. Oh, yeah, well, a couple well, decades, like 30 years, right? Yeah. Yeah, 30 years, right? It was an amazing night, you know? It was the first time I played with those guys in years, and uh, I remember when John called me up, uh, and he wanted me to do a Frehley's Comet reunion, but unfortunately, you know, you know, I had a record deal and I had to promote my own albums and I had a different band, you know, I, who all had families and stuff that, that they needed right. to yeah. support. So, I mean, I just couldn't tell everybody, no, I'm, I'm going to do a tour with another band. But you know what, Ace, that's what made that special night special, because yes. it just happened all of a sudden. You know, Todd was able to fly in, you guys were able yeah. to just, you know, capture magic without all the, like you said a little while ago, all the business side of things. You know, it's just you pick up your guitar, your, you know, everybody picks up their, they get in front of the mics, the magic happens, 
And it's even better when it happens like that. Yeah. You know, Ace, uh, John used to tell me stories like we spent a lot of time in the past decade together, spent a lot of years together. And he would tell me the first time he spoke, he loved you to death. So he said you, when you guys first got together, it was just for the love of playing music together, you know, and and why yeah. you played your instruments. And, uh, you know, he had a lot of amazing stories. I spent a lot of time with him in studios and touring and traveling. And, and he always had wonderful things to say about that era. And, um you know, and about your your playing and, and your relationships. So uh, I just wanted to relay that to you, too. We had a, he, we had he a loved great you too. relationship, you know, and uh, he, he was really good at the things I wasn't good at, dealing with money and, uh, you know, all that stuff. But uh, oddly enough, after the service that the priest gave at the funeral, I ended up hanging out a little while and talking to some friends. And uh, I got a chance to talk to the priest. <laughs> he actually uh, he he shared with me that uh, one night he was hanging out with John, and he told me he actually played a little guitar, and John taught him how to play Cold Gin. <laughs> so I got a real kick out of that. <laughs> oh, I love it. I thought the story was going to be that you you uh, spontaneously burst in flames talking to the <laughs> priest. <laughs> Well, in those days, anything could have happened. Who knows? You know, but. We're talking to Ace Freely. Uh, Freely's Comet was the band that uh, John Regan was part of. He was the bass player. Uh, you want to play some music? Or do you have anything else you want to add? To yeah, you know, uh, I think that, you know, what was your first single off Freely's Comet? Was it Into the Night? Is that your, was the first single? I think you should, would you cool to lead off with that, Ace? Well, actually, in a song that John recommended that I do a remake of was Do You? Yes. He loved that. And then that. we shot a video with, of, of that song. We actually shot that at the Apollo Theater on 125th Street in Harlem. Cool. <laughs> so why don't we lead do off you? with Yeah, we'll lead off with that, whatever let's, Ace wants. Let's I mean, do Do You, uh, Freely's Comet. Ace, thanks so much for spending time and remembering uh, our good friend John Regan. Hey, Ace, Joe Renda's calling in soon. He sends his love. Uh, he's in Florida. Yeah. He's doing well, he, and he sends his regard to you. God, I haven't seen Joe in a dog's age. Or I know. a couple of dogs' age. <laughs> yeah. Well, maybe we'll all hook up when you go to Florida, Ace. Maybe we'll all get together yeah. and have lunch, you know? I mean, the last time I saw him was when he came to one of my shows in Florida, but that was years ago. Yeah, well, he's and, calling uh, in in a little I'm while. I'm happy that he's still alive and kicking, and, and uh, I'd always loved his wife, Marie. Yeah, good and, people. Uh, good people. Very good people, because I spent a lot of time at North Lake Studios. I know, you know that did. he owned with John Voight and Chip Taylor. Yep, I know. Yeah, he was. He, uh, AC had me on the phone for like a couple hours. We were. He had me rolling all the stories. My God, I was laughing like crazy. It was. Uh, it was. Uh, it was, made me feel we, good. We you know, we did some crazy stuff there. I mean, he had a loft with a bed. <laughs> I don't even want to go into it. Just use your imagination. <laughs> I know. He told me. Yeah. Yeah, a couple of chicks at a time. It was nuts, you know. <laughs> but uh, that place, that place, I, I, you know, I miss it. I, I drove past there uh, because uh, my daughter and my uh, wife, Jeanette, live in White Plains, not that far from where the North Lake Studios used to be. So I, I just swung by. And then I, I grabbed uh, breakfast with my daughter at the diner, you know. But I, I'm, I'm so happy you guys uh, gave me a chance to just air a few uh, nice thoughts about John and, and my my positive feelings because there really wasn't any negative. And uh, like I said, I was the one that screwed up our relationship, not him. Well, thank you for he, saying he that. He did right by me. Yeah, he was a good. I mean, he was a great guy, and he loved you. And I'm sure his, you know, everybody's going to be listening here in the Hudson Valley, and his family, and and you know, all his colleagues. So it's nice to hear those words. And and I, yeah, I want to thank I astronomy mean, his for. Wife used to run my fan club, Kathy. Yeah, it's Kathy. He, she, yeah, he's... yeah, it was nice to see her and give her a hug. And you know, I haven't seen Kathy in probably 25 years or more. Yeah, yeah. Wow. You know, and I thought the service was great, and it was great to see some old people. I'm, I mean, some people came up to me, and I couldn't even remember them, but he was telling, this one guy came to me and he said, you know, we used to drink beer in the Bronx together, you know, when we were teenagers, and I, I couldn't place the guy. You know? <laughs> Been a while, right? But whatever. Yeah, I hear you, buddy. <laughs> it was all good fun. Yes, it was. Awesome. It was great speaking with you, Ace. I'm going to I'm gonna get a hold of you, and we're going to... Uh, 
me, you, and Joe Randall, we're going to go out and have uh, dinner sometime. If we can, if we can orchestrate it. All right. I'd love it. Okay. I'd love it. All right. You, you guys, take care. Thanks for having me on. And we know John's up in rock and roll heaven, so all good. Yeah, we love John. We're going. He's missed Ace dearly every day. Yeah. So, I'm and I know he was very well loved in Wapping to Falls by everybody. From what I understand. Most definitely. Most definitely. Hey, it's great right. talking good to you, man. We'll be in to touch. You guys. Thanks for having me on. All right. All take right. care, Ace. Take care. Okay. Bye bye. Who, who am I talking to? You're talking to Pat Gasparini and Chris Marino. I did the Cafe Italia show with John. Yeah, yeah. How you doing, Chris? I'm doing great. And man, have I heard your name over and over again for the handful of years we did the show, and uh, and Marie and her cooking. <laughs> Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You can't do a John Regan tribute, the rock and roll side of things, without you. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I know. That was some fun times. Yeah, that was great. Hey, Joe, I, I just thought it was important that you got on the phone, and um, I know how much you love John and how far you guys go back to when, you, when he was a baby, 20 years old. So 
I thought it was real important that you uh, said a few words about him. And um, so take the floor. First of all, I'm still in shock. (laughs) So, uh, you know, it's not going to be something I'm going to just get over in a couple of days or something, you know. When I got the news, uh, I believe that was a good Friday. Uh, Kathy didn't call me directly because she knew uh, I would really be upset. And so she called my son. And he came over to my house and uh, said, uh, I want you to sit down. And uh, when he said that, I knew there was something wrong, you know, immediately. And uh, and then he told me, and uh, Marie and I uh, were devastated. And it was like we couldn't believe it, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So that's, that, that's, that's how I first found out. And um, after we calmed down about an hour later, I got on the phone and, spoke to Kathy, and she was handling it well, you know. I, I, you know, I guess, how do you handle something like that when you're not ready for it, you know? Yeah. <laughs> We're talking to Joe Rend, a very close friend of John Regan, and we're having the John Regan tribute special right here on Z93. I'm Chris Marino with Pat Gasparini. Joe, I correct me if I'm wrong. You were very instrumental in what turned out to be a 30-year run with Peter Frampton. Tell us that story. Okay. Um, Bob Mayo, who was a great keyboard player and guitarist for Frampton when, uh, in the early Frampton days, lived right near the studio a few miles away. And he came in one day when I was, uh, we, we already recorded Eugene. I don't think we had a deal on it or anything, but I was uh, playing the tapes in the studio. And uh, Bob Mayo came in that day, and he sat down, and he said, Joe, well, listen, I got we have a problem. Carl Rado, who is the bass player for Frampton, died. I think he OD'd. I hope I got this right. Do you guys know more about anything about that history? I'm, I'm not 100% on it, but I think you're on the right track. Okay, so, well, anyway, they needed a bass player right away. Mayo, Bob said, Play that, play that tape you were just playing. I was playing Eugene. I was uh, getting ready to mix it or put some more overdubs on it. And and he said, can you, uh, like, solo out the bass part? And I said, sure. And we, we just played the bass part, and he just loved it. And he goes, you think that guy is uh, capable of playing uh, with uh, us or with Frampton? I said, no, definitely, without a doubt. The guy is amazing. A great bass player, got great sound. He said, well, here's the deal. We have, a, I think it was Wednesday, we have a gig Friday in Long Island. Yep. Uh, we don't have time to rehearse or do an audition. He's going to have to just come out and play and we'll meet Peter on the stage. <laughs> <laughs> that's yeah, what that's, that's exactly what happened. What happened. That's, that's exactly hysterical. Yeah, Is I that unbelievable? You're asking a little too much, aren't you? He goes, he goes I have no way, no, any other way to do it. He said, I'll, I'll give you a list of the songs, and uh, it's about 25, 30 songs. Uh, I'm sure he could pick up, you know, the uh, album someplace and um, whatever, you know, and find out what keys they're in and all that. So I called him, I called John, and I said, listen, you're not going to believe this, but... Uh, you want to play with Frampton? And he goes, yeah, yeah, sure, yeah, you know. Like, I, I said, no, I'm serious. I mean, and I, I went through the whole story. I said, you don't have much time. you got two nights to get ready, and then you're going to go to Long Island. A, a limo is going to pick you up, and you're going to go walk out on a stage, and the first time you're going to see Peter is when you're looking at each other and do the first song. And he was like, are you sure? And I said, I'm positive. Bob Mayo is a really good friend of mine. He wouldn't, he wouldn't do that. So he said, okay. And he actually learned every song. He <laughs> the did. Next, he next crammed it all his stories. How, stayed how up for did it. Stayed so up for hours been? on end. Got that phone call. Didn't sleep until he learned every one of them. And he hit it. Yeah, he just made up his mind. He wasn't going to go out there and, and not be prepared. You know, he said, I'm uh I I, uh, I I believe I called him that Friday morning, and I said, how are you going? And he goes, well, 
I'm nervous, but I'm ready. I, he goes, I, I know all the tunes. I got the keys. I'm ready. He said, well, good luck. I hope it goes well for you. And uh, I believe Jamie Oldacre was playing drums in those days. Yeah, Jamie. And uh, he went out, and he did a great job. Because when uh, the job was over, Bob Mayo told me Peter had the biggest grin on his face. <laughs> You know, he was just happy. He was so happy because uh, they were like in the jam. Where do you get yeah, a bass player? Yeah. Uh, but isn't yeah. how all these rock and roll stories <laughs> happen? Yeah. I mean, again, we're talking to Joe Renda, uh, giving the details of the fact of, of, of the events that led John Regan, our, our brother John Regan, who passed on April 7th on Good Friday, and this is our tribute show, led him on a path that had him with Peter Frampton, for 30 years. Yep, amazing. It's absolutely amazing, amazing Joe. No, it, it is, because um, to last that long, <laughs> you know how rock and roll is. Yeah. Every band, after a year or two or three, everybody gets on everybody's nerves. <laughs> Someone's bound to quit or say something, or you know, it always happens. But they lasted. They they just hit it off. Uh, I got to be friends with Peter, and Peter just loved playing with with uh, John. You know, he he loved it. On behalf of all of us fans, Joe, yep, yep. thank you. Thank I mean, you. Man, what an amazing you know yep. you know God bless you and, and and you know God's hand was in action that day. Well, uh, thanks, uh, but you know, I feel uh, if that didn't happen, John, somebody would have found him. He he was just too good. Yeah. Joe, before we let you go, is there a particular Frampton song that John played on that you loved when he did it in concert with Peter? Well, you know, I always loved the the original big hits, you know, Baby, I Love Your Way, and, and that, that, that I thought was an amazing song. And uh, if you got a tape of, of John playing on that, uh, that would be Definitely. great to hear. That's the one. All right. Awesome, Joe. That would be great. Hey, hey, you guys. You take care. I'll be in touch, Joe. Or I'll talk to you soon. See you guys. Bye. Right, bye. Ciao. Bye. 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 Shadows grow so long before my eyes. And they're moving across the bay. Suddenly the day turns into night Far away from the city The dawn hesitate Your love
Z93, today's Classic Rock. It's a special day today as we remember our neighbor, our friend, and in many, many ways, rock legend John Regan, who lived and nestled here in our, our community. He raised his family, born and raised here, Pat. But the man played with some amazing bands, and he was very humble about it, man. Absolutely, to say the least. But I'd like to introduce you right now to one of his dear friends, bandmates for over 30 years, Mr. Todd Howarth. How are you, Todd? Todd, how you doing, man? I miss you. I really miss you. Chris, great to hear you. Yeah, and Todd, we had you here last time, and you flew in from California with Pat and with uh, John and the, the members of 4 by Fate. Uh, yeah, yeah, a project from, uh, yeah, I can't believe it was about six, seven years ago when that project happened, and it was a lot of fun. I know John, super passionate about getting back together with you, and tell us the story about how, you know, you and John, I mean, we did talk to Ace. How did y'all get together to form Fraley's Comet? How I met him when I was with Chief Trick in, in 85, 86, and we were touring with John Waite. You know, I ain't missing you, missing you on it. Watch their sound checks. John Waite wasn't even up there singing. It was just the late Frankie LaRock on drums, and uh, and Arthur Stead actually was playing keyboards, too. And, and then John was playing bass, and just the, the sound was unbelievable. We started talking right there on, on the floor of this, this, this arena, uh, just briefly. And, and, I, and he, so he asked a little bit about it. He said, well, actually, I'm... I'm I'm more of a guitar player, a lead singer, songwriter. Uh, you know, I, I play keyboards as well, and I, you know, dabble in drums and blah, blah, blah. And, uh, I said, but uh, I'd really like to eventually get back into a, a project where I'm playing lead or at least some lead and, and then the playing guitar. And he said, really? He said, well, I'm working on a project right now, and um, kind of interesting. I can't say who it is, but, you know, just give me, let's, let's exchange information, and I'll, uh, I'll get in touch with you. And so I thought, well, okay, yeah, why not? And so he he did, in fact, do that about four, I guess it was maybe four months later, because uh, it was the end of 86 when they, when they contacted me, and I had ended up flying out to New York uh, to continue a tour, or on my way to continue a leg or, or two with, with Chief Trick. I stopped in New York to audition uh, with uh, Anton, uh, John and Ace, and um, I actually had to do it twice. <laughs> <laughs> the first time, Ace wasn't too wild. I'm like, it doesn't play lead guitar enough, you know. <laughs> but, you know, <laughs> I, eh, you know so I, but I'm not really, I mean, I'm, I can play leads. I just don't care. I'm not a, you know, a legal lead egomaniac. Right, right, I, I just, right. I mean, you know, not that Pat is, because <laughs> yeah. I have to say that. No, he's right there listening. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it, just, it wasn't important to me. And so I came back the next time, and of course, by then they had heard some songs, and then I, I whipped off a couple of leads. And, you know, and then uh, and John was insistent, said, This is the guy you need, you know, for, for songs and stuff. And so that's how it came to pass. Finally, uh, Ed Trunk was there and in support, actually, of, of uh, me joining the project. And so uh, Ace was, you know, like, Okay, let's, let's do this. And, um, uh, <laughs> That's how that started. I love the way he slips into Ace's yeah, voice. It's he sounds like and, a and John used to do that all the time. Yeah. He would go, yeah, 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 you know, hey, hey you know. Yeah. I got news early. Hey, I got news uh, for you. Uh, and we never hear what the news was. We're talking to Todd Haworth, of course, the uh, bandmate of our great friend John Regan. Todd, you know, again, you know, and one of the things Pat and I talked about, you know, uh, the time we have on the radio, not nearly enough to give to John. I mean, yeah. there's so many great stories we can tell, but again, it just goes back to how interconnected, intertwined yep. all of our, as big as this world is, right. as how connected we are. And again, you know, I could sit here all day and tell you in my personal life how my paths were alter altered. Right. And just, you know, doors that got opened and right. stuff like that. Right. And I you know, hear you two guys, are, you know, it's like, and remembering a great man like John Regan. Absolutely. And like you said on the onset, Todd, you know, family man, you know, uh, a businessman, you know, um, uh, just a great soul. You felt good in his presence. And he picked up the bass and slayed it. Why don't we wrap this up? Can you guys recommend, uh, what would you say would be the best 4 by fate song that really would showcase John? And I like I Give. It's That's a kind of one. out I there give. a little bit. 
little es- esti- but he played some great bass on it. Head out with some 4 by fate. Hey, Todd, thanks so much, and uh, all the best to you, man. We appreciate your time on, on this special today. Chris, I really appreciate it. Pat, love you, Mitch, and we'll talk soon, of course. I love you, too, brother. Um, we will talk soon, man. Very soon. Yeah, we will. Uh, and uh, thanks for including me on this, and uh, I think John every day. This is Z93, today's classic rock. Thank you so much for listening. This is the John Regan Tribute Show. Again, if you're just tuning in, we're honoring um, the late, great John Regan. We lost him of all days, Good Friday. He was such a, a firm believer in Christ, and to have to be pa- to pass on that day, on Good Friday, does not surprise me in the very least. Not in the That's least John. Yep. That's John. That's you know, so. John. Absolutely. Pat, thank you. Thank you for uh, inviting me on this journey with you and, and the, you know, being able to talk to Joe Renda, Ace Freely, Todd Haworth from 4 by Fate and Fraley's Comet and the work you've done with uh, John with the Patrick James Band. And 
Um, like you said moments ago, you know, we're, uh, other things are in the works. We're hoping to um, further honor John with some special events. And once we know, you'll know. You know Absolutely. So. But we'll, thanks. We'll Pat. be back. Uh, thank it. you so much. I'm, and thank you, Chris, and everybody here at iHeart and Z93 uh, for getting on board with this. And, uh, you know, I just, in my heart, know this needed to happen. And everybody that I spoke to, Chris was the first guy I called. And he's like, you, you know, did. we have to do this, you yep. know. Um, and um, this is the least that we can do for John because John gave so much to this community and i'm glad that we were able to do um a little bit of a this little for thing, him a little bit of this, yeah. yeah uh tomorrow on uh, our sister station news radio 1450 1370 985 wkip dutchess county's oldest radio station uh, 11 o'clock we'll have a cafe italia tribute Can't to wait. john regan yeah if you're not familiar with the show um i think 2014 so coming up on almost 10 years ago john wanted to do a show with um his friend vincenzo lombardi who has an exhaustive collection of sinatra dean martin uh you, you know louis prima you start going down oh, yeah. The road of all those Italian artists and songs uh, done it. The Temptations, um, uh, Nat King Cole sang in Italian. Oh yeah, so a lot. So we're gonna talk yeah, about. Yeah, you told me all those yeah, stories. Yeah, 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 yeah. So we used to do it every set, Sunday morning at eleven o'clock for many years on uh, WKIP. So that tribute is tomorrow morning. Uh, thank you so much for listening. We appreciate it, and we hope this uh, special lives forever in the uh, social media world. And you know, and share it. We're gonna post it up. We'll, we'll post it everywhere. So, John. My Don, God bless. Grazie. Love you. We love you. We love you, John. And as we conclude, we have one very special piece to play for you. It's uh, John's own words. Uh, a few years ago, unfortunately, due to COVID and other circumstances, we lost both Frank and Carolyn Pallet of The Chance. And uh, in 2021, Pat, John, and I did tribute shows for them. But I found a piece that I, I edited it a little bit so that you could hear John's words, and this is essential John. And this is what he thought about, and just listen. We've been playing a lot of hard rock music, but I'm an old softy. And uh, there's one quote that uh, I think is very appropriate, and it, it was uh, made in a movie, or some of you might have seen, called The Wizard of Oz. By the wizard at the end of the movie. And that quote is, a heart is not judged by how much it loves, but how much it is loved by others. And keeping that in mind, Joe Brown uh, played this song at uh, George Harrison's tribute concert. And uh, I can't think of a more appropriate way. I'm John Reed. And I'm Pat Gasparini, and I also want to thank you all for tuning in today. And uh, it's a very emotional day. Music lives on. For iHeartMedia, the Hudson Valley, I'm Chris Marino. Thank you for listening. Z93. Though the days are long, twilight sings a song. All the happiness that used to be. I'll see you in my dreams Hold you in my dreams Someone took you out of my arms Still I feel the thrill of your charm Mine.